Chapter 9 My dreams are filled with tigers. When I wake up the next morning, I lie next to my sleeping Halmony, thinking about her story. Questions th thunder through my mind. What stories did she steal? I'm curious, and part of me wants to hear them, even if they're dangerous. But I have one more... But I have more important questions like, did I really see a tiger? If so, I'm pretty sure it was the one that hunted, the one that's hunting how many? We have to do something about that. We can't just wait. We need to plan to protect ourselves. There's no chance I'm falling back asleep, so I slide out of bed and pad out of, pad out of her bedroom into the living room. The clouds block the sun outside and paint the house gray, and the living room is so silent that I'm surprised to find Mom sitting on the couch. She's turned slightly away from me, body curled around a half-full mug of coffee. The steam dances and floats up to kiss her face, but she doesn't notice. I realize it's been a long time since I've seen Mom so still. She's always moving. Right now, I feel like I've captured a precious moment. I want to take it and hold it close to my heart. She's staring out the living room window, but there's nothing to see except the vague outlines of trees and a few houses in the distance. I step toward her, and the floorboard yelps. She flinches. Hot coffee sloshes in her mug, threatening to spill over. Lily, you scared me. You're so quiet, always sneaking up on me. Oh, I say, it's not like I meant to sneak, sneak up on her. Sorry. She just smiles. How are you? How did you sleep? That's too complicated to answer, so I nod in response. And I guess a nod is good enough for Mom because she doesn't push it. She plunks her mug on the coffee table as she stands. And when she does, I notice she's dressed nicely in a button-down shirt and work pants. Are you hungry? She asks. No, I say. What are you wearing? I've got a job interview this morning, she explains as she clatters around the kitchen. We've only been here for one night. Most moms would want to settle in and unpack, but of course my mom's already got an interview lined up. She worked as an accountant back in California, and she worked a lot. But I have time to make you something, Mom continues. You really should eat. How about leftover rice cakes? No thanks, I say. I was actually wondering about... You sure? She asks. They're good heated up. Did I ever tell you that how many used to sell her rice cakes when we first moved here? Everyone loved them. I step forward. Really? Mom really rarely talks about when she was a kid. What about tea? Would you like some tea? I can get you some. Mom opens a the cabinet, then stops, hand hovering in the air. Right. How many moved the mugs to the other side? It was different before. She grabs a mug from its new home and starts making a cup of tea, even though I don't really want one. I don't like tea. Mom... I say, hesitating, trying to sound as casual as possible. Did how many ever tell you stories about when you were little? Stories that seemed impossible? Mom frowns. Oh, I don't know. Maybe. But I was never a big reader like you. I like to get outside and play, so I didn't really have patience for stories. Oh. Um, I get a feeling that happens sometimes, like something's wrong with me, but I push it aside. But did she tell you stories about her childhood and stuff? Mom's eyes get far away, like when she's staring out the window. She's never talked about her time in Korea much. I knew she grew up poor in a rural vi village miles away from Seoul. I know she lived alone with her own Halmony. I know her mom moved to the States when she was very little. Halmony tried to find her when she moved out here herself when I was just a baby, but I don't think she ever did. I meant more like, except how do I even explain this? Did you ever find stars hidden in jars? Did tigers ever chase you? Never mind. Mom takes a breath and plasters a smile on her face. Anyway, you should meet some kids in the neighborhood. I have some high school friends with kids your age. I can set up a play date. Mom does this when she wants to change the subject, just abruptly switches topics and acts like we were talking about it the whole time. I don't bother explaining that play dates expired about six years ago, and I don't explain how hard it is to make friends. Some people, friends just stick to them, like Sam. Even though she's mean sometimes, she always has a cloud of people around her. She has infinite texts to respond to, but I've never been a sticky person. I've had a few friends and a group of girls I hung out with for a while. Sam said they were also QAGs, quiet Asian girls, like me, but eventually they just floated away. They were never mean or anything, but they just forgot to invite me to things, like they forgot I existed. They didn't stick. And I guess that's okay. That's just my invisibility. I'm heading to my interview now, Mom says, but you should get out of the house, get some fresh air, maybe go to the library. You might meet some kids there, and you love libraries. I like libraries, I guess, but I don't know where she got the idea that I love them, especially when I used to hate the one across from the street. When I was little, I refused to enter it. I'd sit on the steps while Mom and Sam went, and I'd wait for them to bring me picture books. 
Mom didn't understand why I was so afraid because the library looks like a cute cottage placed right in front of the forest, but the door and window frames were painted in bright, colorful patterns. But I told her, it looks like the gingerbread house from Hansel and Gretel. I guess she's forgotten about that. A flash of annoyance flares up in me, but I shove it down. Yeah, okay. Mom looks relieved. That's great, Lily. You're the best. Have I told you you're the best? She sets the tea in front of me and ruffles my hair. Have fun at the library, okay? She leaves, slamming the foot behind her, and I sip the tea I don't really want. It burns my tongue and tastes like earth, but it sends fire down my throat and wakes me up. And I'm angry, because sometimes it's like she has this whole other Lily in her head. An almost me that doesn't match the real me. I don't like tea. I don't love libraries. And what if I'm not the best? How would she know? It's not like she's paying attention. I get up to pour the tea down the sink, and the swirl of brown water thrills me. It feels reckless and wasteful, but in a good way. I drop the mug in after it, only with too much force. The mug cracks. For a moment, I stare at the crack, and something inside me, something big and gaping, a black hole that's a little too scary to look into. As quickly as it came, my anger leaks away. I don't know what got into me. I take the mug and bury it in the trash all the way in the bottom of the bin where nobody will find it. Then I change into jeans and a striped t-shirt and I braid my hair without bothering to brush it. I pull on my raincoat and head across the street to the library. I'm not a little girl anymore. I'm not afraid of Hansel and Gretel. I'm not afraid of fairy tales. And I don't think I'll find any reader kids there, but maybe I'll do some research. If a tiger is hunting my grandmother, I'll find a way to protect us.